welcome to another episode here at Deep Mound Security. Today I want to go over how to automate stuff on your computer. So we're mostly going to be focusing on Windows based automation at this point in time. There is automation you can do on a Linux system using cron jobs and different tasks involving cron. Um, however, we're going to cover Windows based automation right now just to keep it short for tonight. Um, so the way you automate stuff in Windows is you use something called Windows Task Scheduler. So you can open up your uh, menu here and type in task scheduler or from your run box you can type in task sched.msc either way it'll open up the task scheduler window in the which you can use and there's a bunch of options here that we can use to automate stuff so if we go look at our library you can already see that we've got three different items that we can automate or that are currently automated and they've got some triggers and the next time they're supposed to be run I'll just full screen this real quick um, and details on the last run result. Um, but what we want to do is we want to create a new one. So we're going to go file or action actually, and we're going to create a task. And you can actually export tasks and import them to other computers, and that makes it really easy when you've got to do a bunch of tasks across a lot of computers all at the same time. But anyway, so I'm going to create a task here, and we're going to call this um, get address um, just for now. And then this is just going to out. Uh, update our IP address into a file. Um, I'm just, I already wrote a script for that, so I'm going to automate that for us. But anyways, so, you know, a couple different things. You can actually change who the task is running as, and then you can use Active Directory or local accounts either way to select what credentials should be run when doing it. Uh, there's a couple of other things, you know, run with highest privileges, do, you know, a couple different things. Um, so, like, you know, there's a lot of different options here. Um, hidden kind of makes it run in the background so it doesn't actually open up a window when you're doing stuff, which is kind of nice. Um, now, there's a couple of other conditions over here. Uh, if we go to conditions, so these right here, we're specifying stuff that has to be true or false um, before it'll run. So, for example, you know, only start the task when nobody's, you know, touched the computer for an hour or something like that or uh, you know to make sure that it's not running when people are using the computer or you can make sure that it doesn't run when people you know if it's a laptop it, make sure that it has AC power uh, you can have the computer turn on if it's in a sleep mode um, or if you know if it requires a network connection you can specify that as well uh, but we don't really care about most of this right now so I'm gonna ignore it if you go to settings um, there's just some stuff in here to kind of help with um, troubleshooting and whatnot. So, you know, if the task fails to start, uh, then we can restart it, you know, try restarting it every minute for, I don't know, half an hour. That's a lot longer than half an hour. Um, for about 30 minutes. And, you know, if the task takes forever, then, you know, we can stop it as well because it shouldn't take, you know, so long or whatever. Um, you know, we can also set it so that the task automatically deletes itself if we don't end up needing it eventually. Um, and then, you know, if it's already running an instance and that's taking too long, we can either, you know, start a new instance in parallel, so, you know, be running two of the same process at the same time, or we can just queue a new ex instance, so add it to a queue, which will accumulate, or we can stop the existing instance and just start the new one. Um, so I'll leave it at that for now, because that's generally pretty decent. Um, run as soon as possible after scheduled start is missed. Uh, this is mostly used, for example, if... Uh, so for some reason you turned your computer off and or unplugged it or it died and you know if it was a laptop and You know, it's not able to run for some reason Then the next time it's available plugged in and ready to go It'll go ahead and start running automatically and that's really nice, too um, So let's go over tr to triggers real quick so you can actually have a variety of triggers for this task uh, We're only going to create one right now and so uh, you can see there's all kinds of different things that can trigger it. You know, when someone logs on, as soon as you turn the computer, once the computer starts idling, uh, when an event happens in an event log, you know. So this can be useful for automating, like, for example, security-based um, alerts and stuff like that. So, you know, and we'll go over that a little bit more in a second on how you do something like that. Um, but anyhow, so... Let's, um, instead of doing it on event, let's do it on something else. But, you know, on, when someone locks or unlocks their session, um, so there's all kinds of properties we've got here. I'm just going to go on a schedule, though. 
and then we're gonna set this to daily and we're gonna have it recur every day at, let's set it for a couple minutes from now or whatever or, or from the clock here I suppose uh, let's set it for 35 I don't know we'll probably get there um, and then we'll go uh, we don't care about delaying it you know but anyways you know there's a couple of other things that you can do so we can also say repeat task for every five minutes for a duration of indefinitely um, and I was gonna say that doesn't really apply after indefinitely but um, so you know you can have it recur every 30 minutes throughout the day or something like that and this is really useful if you're trying to get information across uh, a network or something and so we're gonna click OK here so now we've got a trigger let's go to define an action and when you define an action you can do all kinds of things like you can send an email um, not really super useful uh, right now display a message uh, which you know can be kind of fun and useful or you can start a program this is generally what is normally used because then you can run a script and that script can do everything from generating dialog boxes to whatever else in the world you might want to do so I've actually already created a script and set it on our desktop out here um, and all this little script is right here and we can actually go and take a look at it real quick um, it's just a little PowerShell script I wrote it took me two seconds um, it takes get net IP address and pipes it to a file uh, and creates a little text file for us with that data out of it so I'm gonna go ahead and select that and open it up um, and actually uh, because it's not actually gonna run the script I'm gonna type in PowerShell here but notice when I try to click OK um, it's gonna go it looks like you did it wrong it's trying to run PowerShell with this is the argument is that the way you want it? and that is the way we intend it to be so we're gonna go ahead so we're gonna start PowerShell with that as the uh, script and go ahead and click OK and so that was weird um, anyways so that's pretty much ready to go and we can go ahead and scan that off and trigger it anytime whatsoever so what that's going to do is that's going to create a new text file here on the desktop um, which will pretty much say have all that address information like I said it would and so you know there's all kinds of stuff we can do here so back to event logs and stuff like that we could actually go to our windows event logs probably one of the easiest ways to get through this through the control panel um, and then if we go over to event logs we can go to view event logs in the which case and this we're going to pull up a lot of event logs and this is a very large and broad topic and so if you want another video on the windows event logs we can go over that another day let me know in the comments below um, but so here in Windows event logs, uh, there's a couple different kinds of logs, as you can see here. So we've got everything from hardware events to Internet Explorer items to um, uh, it looks like that might be our PowerShell script running now that it's 1135 on the clock um, uh, to hardware events and system events. We've got security events and all kinds of stuff so we can see you know here's a log on event and whatnot so there's a couple different kinds of events and things we can do here um so really kind of interesting and i think that finished but um so what we're going to do is we're going to automate you know something and you could kind of run a script for doing all kinds of stuff like that too um I don't know why that didn't work. It says it ran. No, oh, that doesn't run yet. 1999. Yeah, that was a long time ago. Um, hmm. Odd. Well, that appears to not be working. But if we were to open up PowerShell and run the script anyways, um. Ah, I guess I have to enable scripts. So, quick thing in PowerShell, I suppose we can cover this real quick. So, I recommend, so if you can't run a script in PowerShell, and this is a useful thing to know actually, uh, you can go ahead and open up PowerShell as an administrator. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to modify your execution policy. Um, why isn't it letting me do that? So you're going to run this as an administrator and then you're going to so if you type in get execution policy 
uh, it'll tell you what it's currently running as, and this is restricted, so this doesn't allow me to run any scripts. And we're going to change our execution policy to unrestricted. So we're going to ex set execution policy to um, unrestricted. And then, yes, that's what we want to do. So the next time it runs this, you know, if it was to run properly and we click run, um, then it should be able to run and execute just fine. But we'll let that do that automatically here in another couple of minutes. I'm not super worried about it. So while that's waiting, uh, let's go over audit logs, real, auditing of logs real quick. So what I'm going to do here, and you'll notice that each log has an event ID associated with it and some other different things. So uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but just notice that, so for example, a special logon has uh, 4672 attached to it and logon has 4624 attached to it. Um, so maybe, for example, I want to do something that um, has a, you know, every time somebody unsuccessfully logs onto the system, you know, so every a login attempt uh, throws something like a message or creates an alert and generates it into a file, you know, we could do something like that and put it into a script, you know, that could be really useful. So, well, anyways, the idea behind it is that you could take something like a Windows event log, and every time that event log occurs, you can pretty much pipe the data from the log. Here goes our PowerShell command, it looks like. Um, and this time it did work. If you notice, it did put all the information into the notepad, just like my script said it should. But essentially, um, Every time you that event completed successfully, or you know showed up here in the event log, um, you would be able to notice it, and it would you know do whatever script or every application you know set up a message box, whatever you decided it you wanted it to do, it would complete that function, and you could automate that, and that's essentially the whole basis behind Windows Task Scheduler. So I just kind of wanted to show that to you guys real quick. Hopefully that you can make that useful. Uh, have a good night.